was living undiagnosed with autism for the majority of my life, which has been basically 20 years and like a week and a half. I realized I was autistic mostly on accident because I was watching some YouTube videos and I came across I can't remember whose it was first. I kind of want to say it was Amina. I don't know how to say her last name. And I'm really bad with last names, so I'm not going to say it. If I remember who she is and I can find the video, I would probably post it in the description. Um, but I found her video first, and because you know how YouTube is and like cookies and stuff, I started getting suggested a bunch more like female autism vid videos. And just like off of her video alone, though she wasn't super detailed about it. I thought it sounded vaguely familiar to me, like I could relate to it. So then I pursued it a bit more further and a lot more of it aligned. There was another person, I can't remember, she's blonde. Her eyes are very like open and bright. If I remember who she is, I'll also link hers. Um, I think I also watched a Tony Atwood video, and at that point I was like pretty certain I was on the spectrum with the characteristics that they had described for girls, and yeah, so skip forward. I realized via the input of a therapist I had been seeing, which I don't think, I don't know, I this might be another video topic, but I think being autistic and trying to see a therapist is very difficult because I'm not sure all their well it a lot of therapists actually turn me down it's hard to find therapists to be honest with you at least from my experiences um that are willing to help people with autism or like uh if they, if, they're, if that's not their thing like you have to really find somebody who's just for autism and i think that was kind of the problem that i had with my therapist and maybe the therapist before because i tried to see the therapist before i had been diagnosed and that didn't really go anywhere either but needs to say, roundabout way, this therapist pointed out that autism most likely is reflected in my art. And I kind of think so. Because, like, with the stereotype of autism, they, like, you know, it's normally, like, based off, like, a white male child, you know, a hyperfixation with, like, trains and such. Um, but with me, I think it, it comes in painting. And like I said, I have synesthesia, which is, like, I associate colors with sounds, and I associate sometimes colors with sensations and names. I describe things in like really weird ways. Sometimes like I say smells, smell like colors. Like I think, I mean like it's, I'm trying to think, yellow smells. Like to me, yellow smells are like gross. Like pee, I think pee is a very yellow smell, like a color association, like it's very yellow to me. Um, I'm trying to think of other ones. I love how I can't think of anything else but that one, the gross one. Um, but, like I said, when I found out, like, I mentioned synesthesia, I think, maybe before, Blood Orange, which is, um, Dev Hines' music group, their album Cupid Deluxe, that song, uh, in particular, It Is What It Is. There are, like, three songs off of that album. I think most of that album, though, it just very much screams somebody with synesthesia. And when I found out he had it, I think, I, I swear I read it. I'm not actually making it up. He had synesthesia, and it made perfect sense to me. I think Marina Diamonds also has synesthesia, slash just Marina. Um, Lord has said she has synesthesia. Charlie Xs has also said she has synesthesia. There's somebody else. But those people, like, I don't know, like, when you hear the music, it's just, like, I. it gets very colorful. It's very vivid. It can be very overwhelming sometimes. I think that's have why I have an aversion to, like, I don't know, another thing, different sounds can make me very anxious, like, I can't really listen to orchestra music. But, I think my, I'm all over the place, I'm really, I'm really all over the place, good lord. Um, but no, my hyperfixation, like, my interest has always come through in, like, my artwork. I used to draw flowers, which is, like, a lot of petals, I don't know, I really like the repetition of it, I do think it, like, calms me, like, it, 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 like, soothes me in a way. 
I just don't know how to describe it. And I'm not 100% aware of doing it. Because I was undiagnosed, I don't really look at the things that I do, particularly with this, like, microscope of everything I do being autistic. Because I do think I have stimming behaviors, but I don't think I, like, anybody looked at them as stimming behaviors. It's just like, oh, that's a thing that Sierra does. And... I don't really like that, but it's something that's very common for me, when I, especially when I was younger when I was in school, like, people use my name as an adjective, which in most circles would probably be a positive, you know, like, oh, that's so Beyonce, you know, that's so whoever you want to put, it, like, I don't know, Oprah, people that you like, I don't know, you know, but for me, it's more like, ah, Sierra's a little weird, but no, I used to compulsively crack my wrists, I was really interested in puzzles. Like I said, I like researching things a lot. Um, I, my butt has, like, I've gotten really sore because I've sat for so long before. And one time when I was painting, I was, like, super hyper-focused. I made myself super nauseous. I gave myself, like, a really bad headache from staring at one spot for a really long time. And I stared at everything. That was a process that I went through back when I didn't paint in my room all the time. Back in, like, 2017. I was, like, I would paint really close and then I would step back and stare. Uh, so, in a way, I think being autistic probably does affect my process, but I'm not 100%, like, super conscious of it when I do it. And I have mastered, like, sort of being able to replicate what I see in my mind with my hands, but it's mostly because I recognize what I'm capable of doing and how I work. Like, it's really hard for me to paint with large brushes. I hate big brushes. I only work with fine liners. I've never... I don't think I... I don't know. I don't like them. I don't like the way they feel in my hand. I don't like the way they move paint. I only paint with what most people consider, like, lining or detail brushes. Hmm. Am I forgetting anything? Do I think mental illness influences my art? Yes. Yes, my mental illness probably does influence my art. I don't like pretty art. Like, it doesn't really do that much for me. Like, I like art that creates, like, a visceral reaction. My dad in particular has told me, well, not really just me, but, like, I mean, most people don't really know what they see when they look at my art, at least, like, my earlier art, because I overpainted. That was my art style. But, like, my dad... In particular, he's like, your art actually creeps me out, so I don't like to look at it too much. So, I mean, some people might say that's hurtful, but I actually kind of like it. I like, um, illusions. Like, I had a whole book. There's a whole book of illusions that I have, but I, was, I don't know. I just really like them. I think they're really cool. Um, they're just interesting to look at, because, like, you're like, what am I looking at? I like that. I don't really, I don't really have an issue with that, like, magic or illusions or anything. But I don't really connect with pretty art or, like, realistic art or, like, you know, super pastel cute stuff. I like, I mean, I can appreciate those things, but they don't, I don't connect to them in the same way that I connect to my own art. Which, in a way, I'm not really connected to. That's really weird to tell people because I think a lot of people are like, oh, my art is like my baby. I have paintings that I don't remember doing at all because I work on them and then I just move on. Like, midway through, I'm over it. And... And it's weird, even paintings that I work, know I worked on for a really long period of time, like my earlier stuff when I hadn't quite defined my style, I'm not attached to. Like, I appreciate them, they hold a meaning to me, but I'm not, I'm not, like, super attached to them. It's like, this was a stepping stone for me, and that's really it. Like, it's not something I'm meant to hold on to. It, it was a piece to work through. Like, that's really how I think about my art. Like, I'm not working on it I'm working through it which I guess is very mental when I hear it like that I was like oh ooh, ooh. but uh what's something else I can think of oh going back to my animal psychology class point of the series I'm gonna bring up that about normal psychology class all the fucking time because it was terrible and I do think that a lot of the material was thought-provoking, but it wasn't, like, positive thought-provoking for me, at least, or what I felt like the way my peers responded to it. If any of those people go into therapy, I imagine I'm going to traumatize somebody at least once. I mean, 
I don't know that there's like a super thorough screening for people going into therapy, but some of them have some red flag behavior, if you ask me. Um, Although I kind of think I have been tra- traumatized by a therapist who wasn't really a therapist. Like my, I had experience with a school counselor when I was in third grade that I find super traumatic. You're supposed to trust adults and they're supposed to be able to help you. And I kind of think that's probably why I have an aversion to therapy, but I think that's going to be a different video. Going back to the abnormal psychology class. There was, like, a point where you could figure out, like, like it was, like, a question for discussion if you knew that you carried a gene for, like, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, those types of, like, degenerative conditions, would you tell your children? A lot of people said no. And maybe it's because I know people actually in real life have these conditions and see how, like, they've developed and how quickly someone can decline. I'm a bit biased because I'm, like, I think... I think that type of thing is something you should tell somebody because being undiagnosed really with anything, whether it's like a medical condition or a mental condition, is like really harmful because it's like you start to not trust yourself anymore and like second guess what, like what is real, like what can you can distinguish, which is sort of the point of like my whole scar by illusion persona slash like artistic identity is it's like nothing that nothing that you feel can actually really be validated outside of you sometimes unless it's like backed up by evidence but I'm like this stuff really happened to me you know it's sort of like it can make you feel crazy and it can make you not trust yourself and it that's like a terrible experience that I don't think anybody should ever have to go through because it's like you have to basically like relearn yourself and trusting yourself and your judgment all over again and with me like that therapist suggesting that autism affected my art was something that I had never even considered because like I really hadn't thought of myself as autistic I just it was like I mean it was weird because I did do like the research and stuff I was like oh I sound like I might be on the autism spectrum um but then for somebody else to point it out like oh your art probably really represents and like that it really made me like reevaluate my identity as an artist and like how it is that I contribute to the artistic world and just like the overall world in general and I do think I turned art I don't want to say that it could be it could uh, maybe it is like a stimming behavior but it also because I am I do have panic disorder and um generalized anxiety like I do think it really soothes me in a way which is like I don't know it's hard to find people like in real life that kind of can relate to that that it's like I don't know it's not like a control aspect there's something about it that's like very soothing like, the discipline level of it, like, me sitting for hours, like, there's something about it that's, like, really calming, like, working on it, like, I just dissolve, like I said, I keep their paintings I can't remember, but, like, I dissolved away into, like, an action that I think is, like, I don't, ugh, I can't think of the words to describe it, but it's, like, even if I'm not do like, I don't know, there's, like, I'm doing something productive and sort of, like, destructive at the same time, but it's, like, a very freeing experience. That is like empowering. Did I go anywhere? Does this make any sense? I think I explained how mental illness and being autistic and having synesthesia influences my art. And also, when I listen to like certain songs while I'm painting, it can influence like the colors that I choose when I paint. But I think that's interesting to like review. Because I was like, so for sometimes, like, even though I don't remember doing paintings, I can remember painting two certain songs. I can also remember crying to a lot of songs, because that's something else I do. But that's another subject. If you liked this video or appreciated it, found something useful or whatever, um, feel free to like and subscribe. That's super awkward to say. Super awkward. I don't know how people say it. It's so weird.